Welcome back. I'm still Sanko right here with you. As always, interact with us and let us know where you're watching us from on X, Facebook, and on Instagram is at Y244 channel. Personally, mine is at Brown Sakwan1 and the hashtag which is Y in the morning. But we had asked you a question. Biashadako, we make profit here. How much, especially as we're speaking right now? This is literally the second quarter of the year. In fact, we're almost heading to the third quarter before we say goodbye to 2024. But we are still, we are still, we are still in the initial. I believe you're still in the initial stages of 2024, so don't worry, we got you. And that is the question. Business, how can we make profit here? How much? I'll sample your feedback to us the tail end of this last conversation with my guest, who is live with me right here on set. And I'm being joined live by Basil David Anthony. He is a CEO, Modern Flows, and founder of Africa's Next Young Millionaire. Great to meet you, Anthony. Do you prefer to be called Basil David Anthony or either? Either is fine, you can Either call it Basil. Either is fine. Uh, Basil is yeah. like the most common. Yeah, it's, what? Ple it's a pleasure to be here. Right, Karibu sana. We say Karibu meaning welcome to Kenya. Um, asante Kira. <laughs> yeah. So uh, your story, just a little bit. Um, mm. Where do you come from? What nationality are you? And why are you in Kenya? Uh, I'm a Ghanaian British entrepreneur, but I'm more Ghanaian because I'm born and raised in Ghana. Mm. Um, I'm here in Kenya for a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. One is that I have this amazing um, passion project, which I'm sure we'll get into soon, which is called Africa's Next Young Millionaire. I want to mm -hmm. create awareness for uh, the youth of Kenya to register. I'm mm -hmm. also here because um, Modern Floors, which is my flooring company, that's Africa's um, biggest homegrown flooring company, is also going to be exhibiting at the Kenya BuildCon from 6th to 8th of June. So I'm here mm -hmm. to oversee the, our exhibition there. And yes. then I'm here to explore Kenya and see what other business opportunities I can, I can connect. Because, you know, as they say, your network is your net worth. Yes. So I believe in networking. So, yes, I'll be visiting a lot of places and I hope to network and meet more people. Right. Uh, the previous guests that I've s spoken to, they've talked a lot about networking. Mm. And uh, a lot of young people love networking. Mm. So for you, your visit right here in Kenya, mm. did you come to specifically network with Kenyans in business or you brought your networks of business to Kenya? Both. Uh -huh. it, it's, a, it's a vice versa thing. Um, I'm definitely going to be bringing my network and I'm also going to be networking with Kenyans. Uh, I see, I see uh, a very bright light in Kenya. I will not lie to you. I uh -huh. see a lot of enthusiasm. I see a lot of exuberance. And I see a lot of intelligence in the people of Kenya. Yeah. And um, it's, a, it's a space I would like to be part of. Right. Because um, such, such um, a volcanic exp explosion place with the, uh, your fintech space, with how you guys just operate. And I started coming here, I would say, before COVID couple of uh, few trips. I was doing transit with Kenya Airways a day or two. Mm -hmm. But I, I, my, my, my new visit after uh, post-COVID was just this March. Yeah. And it's amazing. A lot has changed. The expressway, a lot of construction is going on. There has yes. been great advancement, great improvement. And there's no way an entrepreneur like me would not want to be a part of this. Yes. Yeah. Incredible. Um, you, in your description, you're the CEO of Modern Flows. Maybe yeah. you can talk about... Uh, what that company does, uh, what does it supply, and how do you interact with your clients, and mm. maybe who the nationality of your clients a lot is it diverse from country mm. to country mm. or specifically based where you come from? So you can talk about that before we talk about as well La Rosa City and what yeah, it exactly yeah. means here. Yeah, I mean, um, before I even tell you what Modern Flows is, uh, I've been doing business for almost 18 years, and mm -hmm. I started from IT. Yeah. Okay, but uh, that was in Ghana. We used to do uh, digital marketing, web development all these. But I, at that point, um, there was like, um, the service industry was not really appreciated uh, a decade ago. Um, mm -hmm. uh, customers really uh, value uh, products more than services. So um, the company grew, I would say we hit a saturation level. When I say that, I, I, even if you, you put in more effort into marketing, we're not going to go beyond that. So, and you know, um, our continent, uh, Africa, we, are, we, we import more than we produce. So I thought it wise that I need to explore and find another avenue of business whereby I can grow further because that's the, that's the whole aim of business is to be profitable and to grow and to scale up. So yeah. I started traveling around the world, <clears throat> visiting exhibitions, trying to see what, what could excite me, what I could bring back to Ghana to, mm. to, 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 to create a new business. Right. Then I chanced on flooring. Uh, PVC tiles, LVT mm. tiles, SPC tiles, yeah. which are um, synthetic tiles. They look 
like real wood, but they are not actually made from wood. They are not the typical um, parquet. They are not the typical MDF flooring, you know. So I was yeah. quite excited because this is new. And I always, I always believe in that it's good to create your own niche in business. You, sh you shouldn't just follow what others are doing because if, yeah. you, if you do what everybody does, you mm -hmm. like everybody. And that's not what you want to be because if you want to be right. a top entrepreneur, you have to be unique. Right. So I realize okay. this is something very new. Nobody's touching it. Nobody's exploring it in our market. Even in Europe, when I first yeah. saw it, it was really relatively new. I said, mm -hmm. let me take it uh, back to Ghana. Let's test it. I saw carpet grass also. At that right. time, I wanted to put the carpet grass in my home for my mm -hmm. daughter to play. But I take yeah. the carpet grass home back to Ghana. Uh, as, uh, as usual, I would always be putting stuff on my WhatsApp status just to see if people are excited. It is my own way of doing I'm like a market survey. Yeah. Within a few days, my, my, my 10 rows of carpet grass was sold out. So I was yeah. like, oh my God, this must be something mm -hmm. exciting. Uh, the, the vinyl tiles were also uh, catching on. So I decided that it's, uh, um, for a period, I was just buying and selling from uh, re regular um, distributors across uh, Asia and then Europe. It got to a point, I said, you know what, we need to have our own brand. We need uh -huh. to register, have a trademark brand, have qualities, um, specifications that we will meet and standards so that our product will stand tall above other people because it's a new market. A lot yeah. of people are getting into it. And if we don't stand tall, we will mm. just be like everybody. So yes. that's how the brand Modern Floors came. It's a UK trademark brand. Right. And uh, we produce in Europe. And uh -huh. it's been doing amazing. It's been doing amazing. Uh, we've even gone as far as now add adhesives, right. add waterproofing, and yeah. then moved out of Ghana now. Two years ago, I opened our head office in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And this year, our first shipments to UK are actually on the way as I sit here. They right. should be there in, in a month or so. And yeah. we'll start active selling in the UK right. as well, yeah. Fantastic. Now, who mostly are your clients and from what country specifically? Because now you, you've said you get your yeah. you import your raw material. Yeah, you, you'll be amazed. In every mm -hmm. country we operate in, our clientele is different. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. When you come to Ghana, our clientele is usually artisans, but it's usually the direct consumer, the homeowners right. themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, People in real estate. Pardon? People in real estate. P uh, people in real estate, but not the mm -hmm. developers. Not developers. Because um, developers. Not the developers per se. Mm -hmm. In Ghana, the business model is more of B to C mm -hmm. than B to B. Mm -hmm. However, when you come to Dubai, the Middle East, it's a B to B, whereby right. it's more of interior decorators, it's more of developers, mm -hmm. it's more of construction consultants. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the markets are different now. In UK. Yes. In UK. If you, if, if, you, if you know the background of UK, well, you realize that everybody in UK almost has a handy work by themselves because right. calling uh, an artisan or a handyman is quite expensive. Mm. So over the generations, the youth have all gained handiwork experience. They call them um, fittest when it comes to the flooring industry. Mm -hmm. And they actually dictate and control the flooring industry more than the, the consumer. So yeah. I would even say there's a B2A. <laughs> yeah. I'll call it a business to artisan uh, mm -hmm. community of business more than, more than um, in Ghana and then in, um, in the Middle East. Yeah. So I'm here to also explore how Kenya also The Kenyan operates. market is. Yes, um, and I hope that during our exhibition at yeah. the BuildCon, we would, we would get to interact because I've seen a lot of associations, the architects, the builders, the town yeah. and country have all been invited. And I'm right. excited to interact with them and get to understand the space. Right. When you, for how many years have you been in operation now since uh, you started? Uh, I've been doing business almost 20 years, actively mm -hmm. probably 18. Yeah, yeah. The, the flooring business. Flooring, I would uh -huh. say six years uh -huh. in the flooring business. Right. But business landscape of from IT mm -hmm. to ticketing, right. uh, event ticketing, uh, airline ticketing, mm -hmm. sourcing, procurement, shipment, supply right. chain management. Yes. You know, as an as, as entrepreneur, you touch everything. Yes. Um, you have multiple businesses. Some will fall along the right. way. Some will be learning curves. There's never nothing like a failure or a disappointment. Mm. It's always a lesson that would uh, get you ready for the next stage of life. Yes, and the, 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 the businesses you're mentioning are mm. really 
enormous mm. and vast. <coughs> so maybe if you can tell us a story about like how did you tap into the ticketing business? Well, the ticketing. Uh, and yeah. then the tiling uh, and then the flooring the business. Flooring. Yeah, so did it come from family? Did mm. you have business partners? Mm. Did you go to school to study? Mm. Yeah. Well, the IT was because I studied um, IT in school, in Highbury mm -hmm. College in UK. Um, you know, whilst we're doing web developments, uh, th there's something like you can't just be creating products for people mm -hmm. and not be creating some for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, let me give you an example. Let's say you're a fashion designer. You're always making nice outfits for people. But you have to make some for yourself and create your own probably fashion line alongside what you're creating for people. Mm -hmm. So we came up with an idea that... Um, we need, a, we need a technology, something we can birth out of our web development um, business. Right. So we came up with TicketsGhana.com, yeah. which was uh, Ghana's premier online event ticketing selling platform. What year was that? Uh, Tickets Ghana should have been, I believe, 2009. No, um, yeah, uh, Ticket Ghana is probably 18. It was at that right peak. So take, go back 18 years ago. Uh -huh. Ticket Ghana was there. And... Um, we had a, uh, we started get event industry because the idea was to uh, create a database where when event organizers are having events, they right. don't struggle with ticket sales. Right. The database is there, they can, uh, the, the platform is there, the, the distribution of tickets was there. Mm -hmm. Okay, but along the line, the, uh, the, the Ghana's, Ghana's ticket selling part of it, the event industry, wasn't as buoyant as our projections. Mm -hmm. The events were being filled. Right. But they were not being filled by actual ticket sales. That's what, that's how, that's what we found out later on. Mm. Uh, it, event organizers were giving out complimentary tickets because right. of sponsorships uh, from their sponsors, and they were filling up venues. So those of us who wanted to add value to their business, we started uh, having a, f a short fall from there. So yeah. Ticket Ghana evolved into an airline ticket selling platform, which mm -hmm. wasn't even birthed out of uh, any idea. It was just birthed out of customers just calling our office and because of the name, yeah. assuming we sold airline tickets. Yeah. So, so maybe you started from like events and then maybe headed to trips? Yes. No, we didn't actually do trips. It, it just went to selling airline tickets because customers were calling our office right. and saying, do you sell a ticket from Accra to London? Mm -hmm. Do you sell a ticket from London to, you know, and then... Yeah, then uh, you decided to settle. That's, that's how a lot of business is born. Mm -hmm. You listen to consumers because business is not about you. If yeah. business was about you, you, you don't need to open and sell to the public. You sell things to yourself. Yes. It's about what, what consumers need and how you can, you can satisfy them. So mm. if consumers, if the market is demanding something, as an entrepreneur, you, you look into it, you analyze it, and then you provide that service for them. So you had like partners and people who believe Amazingly, in Amazingly, I've never yeah. had business partners before. This is individually? Yes. Individual I, I, funded? I, I, uh -huh. Yes, uh, and you know when you talk about funding, uh, I, the, I want the youth out there to know that I've never started business with any huge amount of money. Mm -hmm. I've always scaled up. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's scaling because, and you know, even if, let's say you want to do something and you need X amount of money, you don't need X amount of money immediately. You probably right. need it over a certain period. Mm -hmm. So you start with what you have, and if sales are coming in, you yeah. manage money well, and then you keep putting money back into it you don't spend you, you know i always say it's not it's not uh, in the beginning stages in the baby steps it's yeah. not time to smile to the bank you just started doing business three months time you have mm -hmm. you're buying luxurious stuffs right it's not it's not yet time for that mm -hmm. the time is keep keep reinvesting right and a lot of people um find it difficult to grasp that because they believe when you once you get into business then you have to start living a, a lavish life no it's it took a uh, I was doing business for 18 years. I bought my first iPhone two years ago. Mm. Do, you, do you get my point? Because, mm. example, an iPhone is costing an average of a, $1,000. Mm. But you can get a good Android phone for probably $200, which right. does the same work. Yes. Why don't you save that $800? Yes. Put it, because the more you inject in your business, the more it will grow. Right. And keep scaling it, scaling it up. Mm. When your business is worth tens of thousands of dollars, buying right. a $1,000 iPhone would no longer be an issue, would it? Yeah. No. So in short, you're very frugal. Well. In your spending. Practical. I'll, I'll say I'm a minimalist, but not entirely. It's just, mm -hmm. you just need to wait when the time is right. Right. Yes. Because um, time, th th there will be a time for it. There's no rush. Right. There's no rush. Uh, as long as you have life mm -hmm. and you have ambition and then you're enthusiastic and you have good health, right. just take your time and keep your focus and move on.
Yes. Uh, an interesting question as well is how do you coordinate your operations with mm. clients now that you're branching into countries mm. now mm. coming you're now here in Kenya. Mm. So how do you con coordinate with your clientele? For example, uh, you find somebody who wants maybe something that they've seen. I don't, I, I don't know if you are active online where you advertise. Very, uh, so very. for example, if a client supports something that they resonate with and mm. they want it, how do you ship it to them right here in Kenya? Well, uh, first of all, I believe in structure and technology. Mm. Don't forget my first um, um, uh, foot in business was technology, was uh, digital, the digital space. Right. So sh when I say structure, I mean you need to have the structures in place, uh, the people that work for you, like right. their tasks, what they do, um, mm -hmm. uh, the, your suppliers, your chain, mm -hmm. all the service providers. You need to have a good structure, a good relationship with them. Yes. Now you need, to, you need to employ, I employ a lot of technology yeah. in what I do. Right. So you've employed a lot of people working for yes, you. Yes, uh, we have a lot of people working for us everywhere. How many in um, total so far? Direct, uh -huh. 40. Indirect service providers is, is a lot. Countless. Countless. Because uh, okay. a lot of people provide us services. Now, when mm -hmm. I say technology, technology is here for us for various reasons. Marketing, your visibility online, all those things. How you operate, selling, um, CRM systems, um, all these things you need to... Because uh, those are what makes your life easy. Even common things like uh, having the Office, uh, the Microsoft Office suite online whereby when, when a member of staff updates a, a, a sheet, you don't need him to print out, you don't need him to send you a copy. Nice. He, whilst he's updating, you're seeing your copy, you, you, are, you are making your edits, you're moving quick. You need to employ a lot of technology. So now, to answer your question, if somebody ma made an order, it's, it's quite simple. Uh, the communication goes on. We finalize what the, the, the order, the requirements, what his specifications are. Uh, he makes what payments he needs to make. Um, uh, an instruction is given to factory to produce, or if it's if it's something that it's in stock, uh, arrangement is made with uh, the the logistics company. Shipment is picked up. Shipment is on its way. Yeah. yeah For so example, uh, flooring flooring material. Mm. So how how do you conduct that uh, business? Uh, the flooring material is two ways. Um, we always have stock sitting down in our warehouses and in our um, retail shops. Best in, in Ghana. Ghana has Ghana has um, showrooms. Four uh -huh. showrooms in Ghana. Four. Four in showrooms Ghana. in Ghana, in Accra, uh -huh. and then we have a warehouse. We always have ample stock. Okay. Now, um, in Dubai, Dubai is strictly a warehouse and mm. because Dubai is more B2B, and we do a lot of online selling in the Middle East. We, there's a lot of online platforms like Amazon Noon. We, mm. sell to, we even sell to Amazon in Saudi Arabia. Now, um, it depends on what we have. If your order is in stock, is, if it's not, we have to produce. Right and we produce from our factory in Europe, and we can either ship directly or transit ship it through the UAE. Yeah. Do you consider yourself a multinational, individually owned company? And are you registered maybe in your country? Do you yeah, adhere yeah. to the local authorities as yes, well? Yes, yes, we're registered in Ghana, mm -hmm. we're registered in the UAE, we're registered in UK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, it's- And uh, you have business opera operation licenses. Yes, in, in all these, in all these, play. We are, we're actually even registered in, in the USA, but we haven't actively started business. But uh, we registered about three years ago just to block the name. And we actually also uh, registered our trademark. Yes. So that, um, because we have, we, 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 have, we have plans to grow and become a worldwide owned company. Right. So we are, we are protecting our brand name in all these spaces. So right. that when we are ready to enter it, our, name, our, our brand name is protected. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, talk about La Rosa City. I thought mm. it's. It, I thought it's like. Uh, mm. Is it was it Neverland, Michael Jackson? So, <laughs> is it uh, th there's a, there's one that Trump owns. Uh, there's mm. a name. I've forgotten the name. I've yeah. Forgotten the name, but it will pop yeah. up. Yeah. I thought it was one of those. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, La Rosa City. Um, I bred this idea because um, doing flooring business, you interact with a lot of real estate. Yeah. And obviously, real estate is also a good business. Right. So, as an entrepreneur. My next step is to get into real estate, mm -hmm. from flooring to real estate. However, I, um, after, after I discussed with my architects, the team, we, uh, we drew up a, a, a beautiful plan. I've, I actually have it with shelf now, a nice apartment complex. I, I, hit, I hit a roadblock. I said, let's stop, because I feel like we're about to do the, the thing I'm against when I say I'm against, I don't mean it doesn't make money, but I feel right. like we need to, we need to, the real estate uh, sector needs to cater to the middle, low, middle, middle, middle class and middle low income earners. Yeah. And the, apart, the luxury apartments we were about to put up were all high, uh, the high earners. And I said no, because mm -hmm. I, I, I grew up very modest. 
-hmm. And I'm African at heart. Yeah. So whatever I do, I still have that um, inner emotion that I want to connect with mm -hmm. regular people. Yeah. So I said, no, we're not going to build these luxury apartments because uh, all we are going to do is make some nice amount of money, but we haven't catered for the real people. Mm -hmm. So how do we fix that problem? Yes. We need to build affordable housing because if, if the building, the, 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 the mode of building uh, is, is expensive, the, uh, to be ex if the materials put in it are expensive, it makes the, the final price expensive, we need to figure out how the Asian markets and the European markets are building to bring costs down. And I yeah. see that in, in Kenya. I see you have apartments starting from $30,000, average $50,000. You guys are really lucky. Those apartments, you come to Ghana, they start yeah. from 100. Mm -hmm. US dollars or Ghana? US dollars. 100 US dollars. Yes, you, what, uh -huh. what you have here for 30 to 50 yeah. starting is double in Ghana. Right. What could be the problem? Mm -hmm. What are you guys doing right that they are not doing right? Yeah. All these things. And so that's, that's where uh, the idea for La Rosa City, I have this vision that we need to build an affordable city mm -hmm. so that if you understand mortgage, you'd, yeah. you'd be able to reverse the calculation and to be able to fit the income of a middle income to a low middle income person. Right. So the more people can own homes. And there's even a, there's a better profit margin there than actually just building luxury apartments yeah. and, and walking away. Right. Sounds good. Yeah. We should love, and, and there's, there's love a, to visit. There's even Ghana. more to it uh -huh. than just the building. There's the, the, the maintenance and the operating of the city. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. But you're best in the capital, that is Accra. Yeah, I'm based Most in Accra. Yeah. 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 Right. Everything is in Accra. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but you're also a 2024 Africa 40 under 40 winner in yeah. home and deco category. Was this an event? This, this was just recent in Kenya. Uh, but it was in Kenya. In March. In March. Yeah, this Africa year. 40 under 40. Mm -hmm. So I won, I, I, won, I won for the category for home and deco for uh -huh. modern floors. For right. our works are modern floors, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe what was the criteria of selecting participants? Well, I, I mean, the organizers will be the best <laughs> to tell you that, but it was basically, you had to be under 40. Mm -hmm. You had to be doing um, extremely well in, mm -hmm. in, in your business category. Right. You had to be making um, social economic impacts also. You need, mm -hmm. you need to also show that you are, uh, you are a philanthropic person. Right. Mm -hmm. You are an expert in the area, area you are in. Yeah. All those things put together, and, and also how much um, media um, reportage you've also gained, because if you're doing good works, the media should pick up on you. So yeah. I believe all those things put together, then um, there was um, voting. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, if I remember clearly, I believe the voting was probably just 30% of how they, 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 they marked, they, right. they, they, they skilled you, but um, it was predominantly all the above things I mentioned. Right. Yeah. Okay, congratulations. Thank but you. you're Thank also you. Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award last year in Ghana. Yeah, you I ranked top 50 young CEO in 2023 as well. Mm. That's last year. And as well as you received the People's Choice Award winner at 40 under 40 that you've just talked yeah, about right yeah, here. Yeah. But also in Ghana. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, 2023 Young Entrepreneur of the Year, uh, that actually caught me by surprise because mm -hmm. uh, I didn't see that coming. I was just uh -huh. there. I, I was actually in Dubai mm -hmm. and then my project manager, I think he was the one that received the letter. Yeah. So he just scanned it and sent it to me. I was like, okay, right. this is interesting. We thank God for that. Mm. You know, yeah. um, young, um, top 50 CEOs too, didn't see that coming. Yeah. Um, I was there and I, I saw an uh, on online publication with that. Mm. With, the, with the People's Choice Award at the 40 and the 40, right. the People's Choice category is purely votes. Uh -huh. So I believe, um, because over the years of work, I've worked in different industries. Yeah. I've actually worked in events. I've done entertainment. I've mm -hmm. even run a nightclub for two years. You've run Ye a nightclub yes. as well. So mm -hmm. I've, I, I, I have quite a huge uh, fan base in yeah. Ghana. Right. So I believe a lot of them voted. Yeah, you have an AKA in Ghana? AKA, an I have a nickname. Yes. Uh, yeah, the uh, CEO extraordinaire. Oh, that's what they call you that? Yes. So you uh, you're the, there's that song that says, if you want to bamba, you come bamba with the big uh, boys. <laughs> Are maybe you? then, not now. <laughs> maybe then, but not yeah, now. Yeah, now I'm more focused. Why, why, though? why then and um, why not now? You know, life is about having uh -huh. a balance. Right. And I believe when, when you are too much involved in uh, the social life, you can forget, you can lose 
the, your, your, your balance. But you've been there, done that. Yes. Okay. I mean, I will not say I still don't once in a while find mm -hmm. some time to entertain myself. Yeah. But you need to have a balance. You need to know when it's work. You right. need to know when it's play. And that's it's part of the structure. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're busy from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. You're busy. Yeah. It's work time. If after 6 p.m. you want to meet a few friends, that's mm -hmm. fine. But you know you have to wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning. Don't go beyond a certain time because you need a sleep. Yeah. So just it's all, it's all about structure. It's all about time management right. and find time because you, you can't you can't also be a boring human being. Right. And w too much. There's a saying that all work and no play. You know. Next so, Jack and Dalboy. So you have to keep a balance, <laughs> and it's yeah. all part of networking because right. you meet people in different circles of life, yeah. and you never know what what business can strike. Right. Out of that. Or who you might meet. Or who you might meet, yeah. Right. In terms of also positioning, now that you're speaking of interaction, yeah. when you look at the landscape and also the ecosystem of African young entrepreneurs, um, I have, uh, I've, I've watched this show, I think it's by Larry Mado on CNN. He's one of our journalists here, but uh, works for CNN. Mm. He shines the light on best performing startups in different cities of African countries. And uh, there's one of the guys he interviewed and he said he's just started everything from scratch. It was all just out of uncertainty and he's gained international national recognition, like a story of resilience and just fortitude and forbearance. So when it comes for us, especially right here in Africa, in terms of us telling our entrepreneurial stories, do you think maybe we don't have enough platforms or maybe it should come from self-inspiration and people should continue sending themselves out there and just stay in the process, stay in the system until it works you, you're, out? You're a thousand percent right. And uh -huh. um, it's actually one of, one, of, one of my missions, you know. I believe that uh, uh, Africa creates too many job uh, seekers than job creators. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we're not even indoctrinating right from school. That no. we're, not, we're not making uh, the, 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 the youth, we're, we're not creating platforms, mentorship, camps, to let them know that being an entrepreneur is actually a great thing. But we have football camps. I have nothing against sports. But I'm yeah. fighting for the entrepreneurship landscape at the moment. Yeah. And we need to indoctrinate uh, right from uh, schools. And we, yeah, need, yeah, yeah. Um, we need to shine more light on the success of entrepreneurs so that yeah. others can get into the space. Because how much help can you, can you, and burden can you put on the public sector? How many yeah. people can um, the government employ? You're 30 yeah. plus million people in Kenya. I don't think your government employs a million people. Right. In so fact, most people are self-employed right here. Exactly. Mostly. And you need, but you need to good, you need to uh, scale up beyond self-employment. You yeah. need to create, become a company, employ other people too. Yes. Because else there'll be a lot of unemployment. Now you can't do everything by yourself. The Absolutely. fingers are all not equal, but they work together. together. So there's going to be mm -hmm. that, that entrepreneur that is going to make all the, all your degrees you get out of school meaningful. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? We need Absolutely. to, the media needs mm. to take this up. Governments mm. needs to take this up. The youth, right. uh, the youth wing of government. They need to create more platforms to shine light on entrepreneurs. The West do it. If yeah. you ask people in Africa about uh, entrepreneurs in, 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 in America, you can name, you name Elon Musk, you name Bill Gates. Why do you know all these people? Yeah. Did you know? Because they, they don't hide their, the success of these people. They shine them because if the private sector booms, it helps the economy. The yes. private sector actually drives the economy. Absolutely. We're the ones that pay taxes. We're yeah. the ones that fuel the, uh, the, the government. Yes. So it is in the interest of everybody for the private sector to boom. Right. How, do banks, how would banks even get uh, um, interest from loans? Are, they, are you only going to borrow to the government? You yeah. to borrow to private sector. So mm -hmm. you need to have um, uh, companies that are doing very well, that are locally and homegrown yeah. in, in, in all African countries. And we need to celebrate them. Yes. We definitely have to celebrate them so that the mm -hmm. youth coming up will, ins will get inspired and would emulate and would want to be like these people. Absolutely. And would definitely even want to be bigger. Yeah. That's the whole point. The idea is for uh -huh. the next generation to be greater than us. Right. We need to leave a mark so that when yeah. they come, they will be better than us. Do you think you're modeling for the next generation yourself? Definitely. That, that is what I'm doing. You know, uh -huh. all these achievements you mentioned, um, they are meaningless. Mm -hmm. They are meaningless because they're just plaques, they're just certificates, they're just honor. It's yeah. fun. It's nice. It's fantastic. It's, it's a great feeling. Yeah. Then, then what? Yeah. What, what, what are you? What, I have five kids. What are they gonna? What, 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 am I, what, um, what message am I pushing on to just, just achieve and just get yeah. uh, luxury stuff? And Successful then dad. That's it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's nothing. I don't believe you've lived your life. What impact right. are you giving to them? What, what lessons are you? Because they shouldn't make the same mistakes. They should have an easier life than us because they should use our playbook 
to mm. know what not to do and what to do quickly. Yeah. So then they, they should move faster than us. There's, not, there's nothing wrong with them being better. Yeah. I tell my son every day, he's seven years, I said, I want you to be better than me. That's, that, that, that is satisfaction for me. If right. you're better than me, it means I did something right. Yeah. I don't need to sit on you and suppress you. No, we yes. need to encourage the youth of Africa. Because right. if, if everything works for us, nobody will even need to come to you for help. Right, absolutely. But you, you get a lot of people always, they need, st they need help, they need this, they need that. That's yeah. actually what's the why uh, we came up with the, my passion project, the Africa's right. Next Young Millionaire. Right. So, so that I can put together a team of people that can mm -hmm. help fund either startups or existing business that need direction. It's just not about funding injection, yeah. but it's about guidance. It's uh, because yeah. mentorship. Mentorship, because mm -hmm. you just don't give people money. Right. And then just expect them. It's also, it should be a marketable idea. Exactly. Is it serving a niche and solving See, a problem? Let me tell you something about yeah. business. Uh -huh. All business can work. Mm -hmm. You'll be amazed. It's right. who drives it. Or who drives it that matter. Yes. Good point. Every, mm -hmm. there's, no, there's nothing like a bad. You can sell broom mm -hmm. and make millions. How you market it, how you brand it, how you right. position it. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Because it's always like, look for the market niche and then yeah. fill it look yeah. for a problem then solve it yes uh -huh. business can work you can sell anything mm. it's who drives it right. how it's packaged how it's presented right. to the people so sometimes it's not just about just giving people money so right. we need to guide them so all these uh, I, I know you've had previous reality shows like the lions den right uh, yeah. but the question the question is that right when you fund these people wh what is the post effect of it yeah where is the where, where is the the story can we see how they use the money, how yeah. the money was given to them. Was it given to them in one tranche? Was yes. it given to them in, in bits? Yes. Then how, how did they manage it and how did they use it? And how did they become profitable so that the investor was also satisfied yes. with the results? Those uh -huh. things is what we need to look more into when we are helping yeah. young entrepreneurs. Accountability yes. and bit by bit. Yes. As well. But also the conversation about money comes in. Mm. I, I read somewhere that right here in Africa, we are taught about it's always go to school, finish high school, get to uni, graduate, uh, get a certificate, go get a job, get married, have kids, die. Mm. But we are not taught the creativity of like, this is how you have a relationship with money. Mm. It starts with you serving, the savings culture. And uh, many guests that I've interviewed here on the show, they've always talked about their relationship with money. This is how I handle money with my kids. The, the conversation about money started immediately. My son maybe started walking. So mm. it starts at an early initial state. But for us right here, it's like, you know, the, the first time maybe somebody will give you 10,000 Kenyan shillings, maybe, maybe you're in campus. So mm. that's when you're getting to experience huge sums of money. Mm. And you want to go into business and you make your first 100,000 and you mm. go buy an iPhone. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that. Mm. Don't, don't you think we need to maybe shift our trajectory in terms of let's cultivate a culture of having a relationship with money and it starts as early as a toddler, as a goober? You, yeah. you are, you are, you're right. Because mm -hmm. uh, it goes back to the saying that charity begins at home. So right. we can also say money management begins at home. So yes, you're 100% right. Parents should also uh, indoctrinate a culture into letting uh, their kids understand the value of money. The word is value. And, and understand how, how, how it's not easy to come by money. Yeah. Even if you have the money, do not make it easy, accessible to your kids. Tax them. If, if your kid wants a toy, tell them, okay, today do this chore. Earn it. Earn it. Yeah. Let them understand that money doesn't grow on trees. You work for it and you mm -hmm. earn it. And that way, when you get it, you will not waste it. Absolutely. But if yeah. something, there's a, another saying, they say, my mom, that was one of my mother's favorite. They said, easy come, easy go. Mm. So mm -hmm. if it comes easy, it escapes very fast. Exactly. So let mm -hmm. them understand the value of money. Let them learn how to earn it. And when they get hold of it, Yes. They, won't, they won't waste it, they'll manage it well, and they'll grow it. Yes. A lot of people have failed from, with family businesses. Right. Why? Mm. Why? Because um, they, didn't, they didn't teach them these. Their parents didn't have time for these. They were just spoiling them. But mm. you were spoiling your kids. You were growing a business. Now you are no more. Your child does not un understand all these values. He takes over the business. He, he, he collapses the business. Yeah. What does he do with the, 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 the first time he enters the business, he starts spending lavishly. Yeah. And then this business is collapsed. So you can't be, spent, as a parent and as an entrepreneur, you can't be spending time growing the business and not preparing the people who are coming to take over your business also. 
Right. Else, else, and that's why if you look around in Africa, we're always restarting businesses. Yeah. But if you look at the Western world, they have businesses that are hundreds of years old. Yeah. And they keep on scaling and scaling. And exactly. Scaling. But yeah. we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't involve the youth. We don't train them. We don't yeah. connect with them. I right. grew up. I grew up knowing it at home that when elderly people come, you have to disappear. <laughs> you have to go away. You can't sit there when they talk. You right. know what that has done? Mm. My 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 mother's family because of that, they have family property that after they, their grandmothers died, they don't yeah. even know where it is. Yeah. Why? <laughs> because they didn't involve. Yes, in the conversation. Yes. Mm. And who are you? How how can you build all this? And when you leave, you don't have people to carry on. Right. So we need to, we, we don't need to make that mistake they make, they yeah. made. That's why we need to look at their playbook and what right. they did wrong, we shouldn't repeat it. The mistakes, and they call them generational patterns or curses. Mm. <laughs> we need to, we, we need to quickly, yeah. and if they don't, if, they, if our parents are still alive, they will not understand us, but right. they will get to a point, they will know. Because yeah. I used to disagree a lot with, uh -huh. with my mom. Right. I love her so much, yeah. but I'm sure now she's really proud. Yeah. She understood why I was, I was, I was rebellious about... You're feisty. You know, <laughs> I was like, this, this is not right. We uh, have to do it this way. And it worked either way. It works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It works. Because you have to believe in what you... Uh, yourself. Right. Works. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we have like three minutes before okay. we exit. What has kept you afloat all this time? It's just the ambition. Uh, is the drive. I would say also it's the, the fact that I just want to do better than what I did yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, more, more so than ever now, I want to be impactful. Right. So I'm actually working on um, a book right. for teenagers, yeah. which, which is, which is going to be called Dream Bigger. Dream Bigger. Yes, mm -hmm. because I can't just be preaching these things we've spoken about, right. and I'm not, a, I'm not playing a key role in it. Yes. So I'm writing a book for teenagers, which is called Dream Bigger, which is aimed to inspire them to become entrepreneurs. Right. That is also something I'm doing. So it's just not about me anymore it's about what i can do yes and i believe that if you help um society and you help the next generation whatever business you do um god being so good it will grow for you yes yeah uh maybe also for example if you are to partner with somebody right here in mm. kenya maybe what would you love them to know about you mm. and then also maybe what would you present to them in matters networking now. Well, I mean, first of all, if they want to reach out, uh, you want to reach I, out. I'm, I'm on all social media. Uh -huh. Basil David Anthony. Right. If you want to do business with Modern Flaws, also <clears throat> Modern Flaws is on all social media. Modern Flaws, or they can go to modernflawsglobal.com. Right. Now, um, there's a customer care number there. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's WhatsApp, everything. I right. mean, they, when they get to modernflaws.com, they pick a country. Mm -hmm. like if you're in Kenya, pick UAE because we are not yet in Kenya. So oh, UAE will yes. be the best. Uh, the best uh, you can, if you deal with Ghana, you, it'll be confusing. Right. You need to deal with our head office. Now, okay. uh, for me, personally, I, I believe in there's something, there's something beyond life. There's, right. there's a divine aspect mm -hmm. to life. Mm -hmm. So I can't tell you what I'm looking for in a person. All right. Everybody I've ever employed I really didn't look at their CVs. Right. I, I was more interested in the interaction and, the, and how I felt right. in our first interaction. So mm -hmm. I believe if it's right, it will click. Yes. It will connect. Mm -hmm. you, you, you have some customers walk in sometime, and yeah. you can quickly feel like this is off. Right. The energy. The energy is not there. <laughs> yeah. So as, as much as we have all the, the right. things in life, the, the, the black and white that we follow, yes. listen to your inner self. Because that energy in you mm -hmm. is, is the best thing that's going to direct you. Absolutely. And it's going to tell you where to go, where mm -hmm. not to go, who to work with, who not to work with. And it will yeah. not fail you. Right. That's, that's the voice of God mm -hmm. talking to you. As they say, they say it's the intuition as the guiding light. Mm -hmm. uh, did you mention you had an event somebody, yes, somewhere yeah. happening at an expo at Sarit? Yeah, yes, yes. So Sarit, uh, if you want to see Modern Floors products, uh -huh. please come to the Sarit Expo uh -huh. uh, from 6 to 8. It's... Um, at the second floor, right. and we'll be exhibiting uh, our modern floor. We'll be at the stand A25. Right. To visit that. And also, if you want to register to participate in Africa's Next Young Millionaire, mm -hmm. just go to www.anym.global.com. Right. It's just a quick form. We're not asking too much information. Just submit it. And then right. um, when we get all the registrations, hopefully, if, if a lot of Kenyans uh, register, our fair season will come to Kenya.
Yeah, maybe lastly, your biggest lesson you've learned in business, and then also, what is that one lesson you'd love to pass to Kenyans who mm. want to venture into yeah. multinational business, yeah. just like as you are? Well, um, I have a lot of lessons, but I want to leave them just with one. this one. Just one, yeah. Integrity is a free marketing strategy. Right. Yeah. Whatever business dealings you deal with, anyone you come across, be, f be fair, be civil, right. be polite, and make sure that you don't cheat anyone. Mm. Because that, 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 that recommendation, that reputation is what's going to propel you to the next venture. Right. If I had not b uh, exhibited those characters when I was doing IT, when I was doing events and ticketing, my flooring business would have been affected. I walk into my showrooms and my staff would tell me, said there was a customer here who said he knew you from 10 years ago. You, he used to buy this from you. He used to do this from you. Yeah. And that's why he's buying from Modern Floors because right. you treated him well and business was smooth and fair and the integrity is there. Right. So remember, integrity is a free Marketing, marketing strategy. strategy. Yeah. Thank you so much, Basil. And I Thank think you too, this has been a riveting conversation. We should continue and have a part mm. two, but we'll allow you to go. And mm. thank you so much for Thank coming. you for having me too. Karibu sana. All right, that's what we say. Thank you for watching as well. We've come to the end. Thank you for riding with us from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. We'll definitely see you tomorrow again, bright and early, right here on Y254 channel and at Brian Sakono. And see you tomorrow.